Hey everybody. Um, so today I got the Power Spec. It's the Power Spec Duplicator i3 Mini, and um, I got a pretty good deal on it. Um, the du Power Spec is actually the Juan Hao Duplicator i3 Mini, um, which is the same as the Mono Price Maker Select Mini, and. Um, oh, there's one, the one that uh, Cocoon Create did as well. I forget the name of it, but it was a mini. Um, so let me get my screens here situated. Get the chat pulled up. We got Sean's in the chat. Uh, Vince is in the chat. James is in the chat. James, I hope you didn't get in too much trouble at work today. <laughs> so a um, little bit of a backstory with this printer like I said I got a good deal on it um, I stopped at Micro Center on my way home from Washington today and found out that they had a um, a sale going on the um, duplicator mini which I've been kind of looking at that and I know a lot of people have pushed me towards the Ender 3 which I really was leaning that way I was really tempted to order a uh, Ender 3 from Creality because as you can see back there I got the CR10 going in the printed solid enclosure at which doors open but it's PLA so it doesn't matter um, I've been super happy with the CR10 and everybody's telling me you know the Ender 3 is basically the CR10 just on a uh, CR10 or CR10 mini on a mini 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 scale I guess um, <laughs> I don't know, Hack Monkey, if uh, Inland gave me the full scoop on that or not. I, what I ended up buying was a old, old box. You can tell the box is older. Um, but anyhow, um, so I've been looking for a small printer to potentially take along camping with us. Um, I used to take the Flash Forge sitting over there. Um, I'd take that, and when I had my duplicate, Duplicator i3 Plus from Wanhao, um, I would take that along camping with me too. Sometimes taking both of them actually. Um, but we, in the last year, we got a, a new puppy over the winter time, so we now have two dogs that we take, plus two kids, plus all our stuff that we take along camping. Um, so space is a little bit more limited in the uh, in the SUV when we go to go camping. Um, so I've been looking for something smaller that I could. Let me get this microphone. Um, looking for something smaller that I could take along camping still and not take up a lot of room. Uh, when we camp, a lot of times I'll print small stuff for the camper, um, for the chairs that we have. Um, actually, while we were camping this past weekend, I had my laptop and my calipers with me because um, I, I take my laptop pretty much everywhere. I take my calipers in my laptop bag all the time. Um, so our camping chairs have a spot on the side of them um, that when we bought them they came with cup holders well those cup holders in the last three or four years that we've had those chairs have gone missing so i modeled up or measured up and modeled um saturday night a cup holder um and actually kind of elaborated on that once i got the initial cup holder design done I actually added a cell phone holder to the cup holder as well so we can just when you're sitting in the chair you can drop your cup in and you can stick your cu uh, cell phone right next to it um, and that also opens up the possibility for other attachments to go on the chair I'm not exactly sure what attachments I'm gonna put on the chairs but the options there now that I have the base um, piece made which basically it's just a keyhole slot that you need in the back of it but what I did is I modeled up the chair um, the clip and brought that home did the the cup and the cell phone holder printed it out and it's actually upstairs or i'd show it to you um but it would have been nice to have a printer there so that saturday night i could have run off the the initial um prototype of it and seen if it worked and if it worked hey i already got my part right there at the campground ready to go ready to use on sunday um but again, with space being kind of constrained, I wanted to get a, I've been looking at small printers. Um, this one has been one on the list. Basically it was a short list. It was the Wanhal Duplicator Mini and the 
Ender 3 um, were the two that I was really looking at a lot um, because of their small size and form factor. Now the Ender 3 is a little bit bigger, has a bit big, quite a bit bigger build volume than the uh, Duplicator Mini does, but I've stopped at Micro Center. Um, they had them on sale for $150, $149.99. Um, and they had an open box. They actually had two originally today, um, but by the time I got there, they only had one left. Um, so I started talking to the, the one clerk there while I was waiting on um, some answers from Inland or from Micro Center, um, from the girl who manages the 3D printing section. Uh, I was waiting for some answers from her on Twitter about the Inland PLA, which Hack Monkey asked in the chat if I got the straight, if I think I got the straight story on that or not. Um, I was waiting on answers from her and saw this open box, and one of the clerks came over, and um, I asked him. I said, "Hey, you know, the printer's selling for $149 right now." The open box was $143. I'm like, it's only a few dollars difference. Is there anything you guys can do with the price? And he goes, yeah. He goes, we can do that. So he disappeared, came back about 10 minutes later. They take forever at Micro Center. Um, I think they secretly want you to keep browsing while you're waiting for them to come back so you buy more stuff. Good strategy. Um, he came back and he goes, oh, he goes, I can do $104 on it. So done. Um, so I bought the Duplicator Mini for $104. It's the cheapest 3D printer I bought. Um, up on top of the CR10 enclosure, back this way, um, is actually my TiVo Tarantula, which I paid slightly more than that. I uh, paid $115 off Craigslist for that. Um, so this is by, this is the cheapest printer that I've gotten, and finally kind of entered that. You know, everybody jokes about the $100 printer. Well, now I've got one that's technically $200, but um, today it was $100. So if you do have a micro center close by to you, um, not an ad form or anything, but just a good deal, um, check out their website, pull up your local micro center, and uh, pull up your uh, micro center local one and see if they have any open boxes of any other 3d printers on sale um, they will take the open box price and drop it by whatever the discount is for the sale so this was supposed to be 143 dollars they dropped it by 49 dollars um, so <laughs> basement basement bar or bargain basement printers with matt there you go um, so real quick here, let's just uh, catch up with the chat. We've had a bunch of people come in. Uh, we got Sean, Vince, James, Minnesota Maker, uh, Hack Monkey, Chris from Practical Printing, uh, Chris the Viola Nerd. Uh, we got Carl, Knack 3D Designs, um, 3D Gusner. And that's it in the chat so far. So um, welcome everybody to the stream. Thanks for coming and hanging out here for a little bit. Um, it's not going to, hopefully not going to be a real long stream. Uh, get this thing out of the box. I don't even know if there's any assembly of this printer. I've never actually watched anybody's videos or anything. Um, but to answer real quick, Hack Monkey's question in the chat about if I got the straight story from uh, Samantha uh Snyder, I believe it is, from Micro Center on the Inland fil Filament. So there's been this bit of a debacle going on about Inland Filaments here recently. Um, they changed, they didn't really change, they added a manufacturer of the Inland PLA, which is this. Um, I've been printing with Inland for probably a year and a half or so ever since I figured out where Micro Center was. Um, and I, I've loved the filament for a cheap filament. I mean, most of the time, sorry, one of my HVAC vents is closing. Um, come on. Okay, so... This one's actually TPE. I don't think the TPE has changed uh, manufacturers at all, um, but this one's an old box. Um, 
what they did is they changed manufacturers or added a manufacturer to keep up with demand and in doing so the recipe for the PLA obviously changed you, one manufacturer to the next they're not going to make it exactly the same at least not right off the bat um, so the trick with inland that we know of so far and I've gotten mixed stories on this but from my experience and from Chuck Hellebuck uh, talking to him his experience with it this is what you want to look for with inland PLA um, this style spool and I've gotten a few mixed results with this I have had some other ones that are on this spool but turn out to actually be the new stuff but the one so far telltale sign is this bag is not a resealable bag um, once you open the plastic packaging it's open um, you're not going to reseal it the new stuff is coming in ziploc bags but when i went to micro center today let me pull up a picture because i actually took a picture of it um, they changed the boxes now too and here's the funny thing so i got the what i think is the old stuff where did i put that box here's the the sticker that's on the box you can see they put an optimal uh, print temperature sticker and they increased the temperature from two uh, let's see what was it underneath there so if you look at the box now it says it's 215 to 225 Celsius the old temperature was 190 to 220 and I can vouch for that 190 to 220 I've printed um, I've printed with Inland long enough that I've, I'm on well, most of my printers except for my Delta. Um, I typically print 200 degrees, maybe 210. My Delta is the only one, and it's it's got an E3D um, knockoff hot end on it. Um, that one I have had to bump to like 215 to um, get good extrusion, decent prints out of it, and everything. But otherwise, I mean, I've printed down to 195 really no problem um, and typically print 205 was my usual set point um, the new stuff was being packaged in the exact same box exact same labels exact same UPC numbers um, they see it Chris they um, they put these stickers on to correct it but the problem is they put the stickers on what appears to be the old stuff um, like Hack Monkey saying in the chat, the spool is a defining factor. The new stuff does have a rough texture to it. It it's feels slightly between normal generic PLA and somewhere between that and like the protopasta matte fiber. It's kind of like an in between there, but it does have a, de a definite rough texture to the filament. Um, now I'm not going to open this one up yet because I have another spool of blue sitting on the other side of the wall. Um, I bought this because this is my favorite blue um, filament or blue PLA so I've kind of been buying spools as I find them um, but the new stuff has like a rough roughish texture to it um, yeah so if you get an old box which is the white packaging the uh, the filament will have a rough texture to it but the problem is you can't tell that in the store if it's a rough texture now here's I don't know how well this is going to show up my phone's in night mode so the blue's gone but you can see here is the old boxes and that's the new boxes now there's blue boxes actually say PLA plus on them come on phone Try to zoom in on that. Yeah, I don't know why it's acting dumb. Um, but the new boxes say PLA plus. If I looked up the UPC for this one, it says PLA plus in the description or the specs. Um, it's not the Egyptian blue; it's the regular blue. Um, so I think what I got is the old stuff. We'll see um, when I get to printing with it. We'll see if it's the old stuff or not. I actually have a stack of the new stuff that I'm sending back because the new stuff um, can no longer print at 210 degrees. It can't print at 220 degrees. The first 
temperature that I actually was able to get this th stuff to print at is 230 at an absolute minimum. And that's even in the enclosure. Um, I've actually found that, with that before I got my enclosure, I was having to bump to like 235 and even occasionally 240 degrees, which depending on your printer doesn't sound bad, but a lot of, actually all the printers that uh, Micro Center sells in the stores and on their website can't technically handle over 230 degrees because they're not all metal hot ends, except for maybe the lull spots. Um, they're the only ones that can probably go over without modifying the printer. Now, like my Flash Forge, I got the all metal hot end in it. I can run that up to 300 degrees if I want to. Um, so, long story short, that's the deal. I don't know. Um, according to Samantha Snyder, the new boxes is actually what I want. Um, I didn't buy any because I was afraid of, of getting the crap filament. So, we'll see. But, anyhow... Um, we had John from You Do It joined in. Chris left. Um, and red lights in here now. So, yeah, I have some of the old silver Hack Monkey. Um, it's yeah, it's a boring gray, no shine to it, no sparkle, no nothing. But uh, for the new stuff, but the old stuff was was really nice, and I do have uh, a box of that still over here. Um, I've kind of I, I've switched my go-to normal filament now once I run out of all the inland that I have or if I need a specific collar um, is going to be pr uh, printed solids daily PLA stuff prints great price isn't too bad it's uh, 50 cents or 25 cents less than uh, hatchbox and prints really well so plus printed solids uh, an hour and 45 minutes from me so if I need it like now I can drive down there and get it um, so I have that advantage too, um, which I just ordered a case of, I ordered their red, white, and blue. I ordered a roll of natural and, uh, Jen got a roll of the proto pasta mermaid teal or mermaid tail or whatever they call it. So anyhow, let's get into the, the unboxing of this thing. I'm going to turn the printer over here. Uh, so there it is. Ignore my messy office. So here we go, we've got a PowerSpec Duplicator i3 Mini, prints PLA, pre-assembled, okay, I'm a dummy when I said I don't know if it has any assembly, because <laughs> it says pre-assembled, uh, build volume 120 by 130 by 100, so I'm thinking that's 120 wide, 130 deep, and 100 high, if they wrote it on there the way I'm expecting it. So, let's get this thing opened up, and again I paid... Um, $104 for this, which you can get it for that price if Micro Center has an uh, open box printer. Open box printers do come with a 30 day return period, so if there's something wrong with this thing and it doesn't print for us today, well, I take it back and get my money back. note of the filament the uh, guy that waited on me at Micro Center told me that the new stuff is not what I want so uh, hack monkey I'm still not sure about that answer okay so we've got an unstable camera it's a little bit crooked but we got packaging and foam The new boxes were the new stuff. Okay. Hack Monkey, you sound like you go through inland like I did. Um, supposedly, they're going to have new and old. So, uh, I got it from the Rockville one. Uh, or, sorry, not Rockville. Um, Parkville, which is the Towson one. So, here's what we got inside the box. And as you can see, pretty much right there is the printer. Uh, looks like the foam's going to come out with the printer. And the only other thing in the box, loose in the box, is the manual for it. 
That is one cool thing about power spec printers. I don't know about Juan Hao, um, but the power specs come with a book. I actually still have the book from my uh, Duplicator 3 that I had to take back almost at a year because uh, the main board failed and wasn't outputting to the Z axis. So, box is empty. Let's get that out of here. And then we're back over here. Let's try to get a better angle. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay, so on top here we got a box. <laughs> okay, so inside the box we have a spool holder. We got the power cord. The cheap USB cable. Check that out. There is a little cheat sheet guide to getting started with your printer. But as far as uh, leveling the nozzle and everything, shows you what too high of a nozzle looks like, okay nozzle, and too low. So that's kind of interesting. I have yet to get a printer that came through with something like that. So that's pretty neat. Uh, I think the last I talked to Nella Bean Gussner, uh, he was doing pretty good. Um, his business is doing really well, taking up a lot of his time, and that's where where he's been. He does keep saying he was hoping to get back. Um, so then the the measuring tape on the sides of this are actually for the gauge for the Z what's that Z axis and nozzle. Okay, he's been posting on his Facebook shop. Cool. Or on his Facebook page for a shop. Alright, so we got that. We got an extra piece of PTFE tube, Allen wrenches, and zip ties. I always think it's funny that printers come with zip ties. Um, I guess, I don't know. I'm not sure why you need a zip tie on a pre-assembled printer. There's a broken zip tie. That's probably from the person who opened it spatula these actually <laughs> these spatulas are actually pretty decent i like the other one that i have from my duplicator three um admittedly i forgot to take it back with the printer so i got another one of those that's awesome we got a nozzle cleaning a cleaning drill bit um be careful with these you actually something like pooch's uh 10 piece nozzle cleaning kit is a little bit better um, there's spring steel wire that you can stick up in your nozzle when it's hot. These you have the potent these little drill bits you have the potential to uh, damage the nozzle when you're doing it. We got SD card and micro uh, SD card adapter and micro SD. This is also a pretty hand handy tool too um, for pushing down through the hot end to force anything down into the nozzle and pretty much clear the nozzle. Um, I've actually had to, had to use this quite a few times on my uh, Duplicator 3 that I had, um, or Duplicator i3 Plus, sorry. Um, so these are pretty handy to have. And then there's also a file. I'm not sure that that actually belongs in this. That looks like an, a used file. <laughs> that looks well used. So I'm not sure that that actually belongs in here. But hey, free file. Okay, so that box is empty. Yeah, uh, 3D Gusner. I think that's a lot like what Pooch has is, um, I think they remind me of guitar strings, except for the larger ones. The larger ones obviously aren't guitar strings because they're not springs. So we got packaging material, pitch that in the box. And then pull the printer out. Just turn that around so you guys can see it. So this thing's pretty small. I mean, you can see it's shorter than up to my elbow. So, I mean, it's, what, maybe 16, 18 inches tall. More packaging. Get rid of that. Yeah, I think you're right, Eddie. I think it's the same as what you use to clean uh, paint guns and stuff. So there we go. It's unboxed. That was easy enough. It's the fastest unboxing that I've had. 
Um, so let's get some power. And there's on the back, there is a um, the power connection. It is a fused power connection and you're on an off switch. So we'll get this turned on. Now, the one thing, uh, it was funny, the one they had at the store, the one cool uh, cooling fan inside here was actually, the uh, bearings were going bad in the fan. And um, <laughs> it was sitting there just screaming. It was the loudest printer sitting there, which, I mean, it's a cheap printer, so you can't really expect too much. All right, I'll tell you what, let me bring the camera down here. So we've got 3D printer ready, speed 100%, and I believe this is running a version of Marlin. Um, I do know from a little bit of searching that I did that um, there is a uh, open source version of Marlin available for this to be flashed. But what we've got is over here on the side there's a USB um, B, I guess it's a mini B, or no standard USB um, port you got micro SD there's a reset tiny little reset button down here that you can't see because of my logo um, so you know temp limits and stuff like that which I don't know if thermal limits enabled on this um, yeah I know micro center easily could put another fan in there so it wouldn't sound so bad but they didn't um, micro USB reset button we got the screen and the jog dial so I'm assuming yeah this is a lot like Marlin so it's probably a version of Marlin that they're running on here um, no SD card so let's put the SD card in and it's a one gigabyte SD card that comes with it automatically recognizes the SD card that's kind of nice um, I've had issues with uh, TiVo having to be rebooted to get it to before I flashed the firmware on it um, and uh, you'd have to either hit refresh to load it or um, occasionally on the TiVo you'd have to reboot it so that's kind of nice that it right out of the box has automatic um, SD card recognition so let's see what we got here let's do level the bed see what this thing does you can see for being used the bed actually looks pretty good um, it has a cheap build tech and that already is too close but there's a goober on there so I'm gonna heat it up first let's put it back down here Let's see what's under quick settings. Preheat. If this thing works out, I do plan on maybe putting a heated bed on it. Um, not exactly sure if I'll do that or not. So we're going to heat up. Uh, while it does that, I'm going to raise the print head back up. Maybe. That has the change filament option. That's nice. Does not have a uh, filament runout detector or anything on it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen from an angle. And the jog dial is not too sensitive on it. Uh, little turns give you little steps. So we'll get this raised up. Self, so plenty of room to work here. Okay, let's go back, back again, back again, back again. All right, so we're currently at 155 degrees. It's preheat temperatures 210 degrees. 
Let's see what the chat's saying while that's heating up. <laughs> Robbie Mack and his Kershaw knives. Actually, Robbie Mack, hate to tell you. Oh, that is my Kershaw. Never mind. Hack Monkey, you're the one that's close by uh, JMT, Joe Mike, right? Center, surely they could have. Yep, we got that. All right, uh, 3D Gustner said to try Android IP webcam as a second video source. Um, I do have that on my phones, um, but there's a lot of lag for whatever reason when I use XSplit to, to broadcast or live stream. Uh, CR10 is actually printing. Well, this this is almost heated up, but I'll show you this quick. The CR10 is printing a couple of these, which are um, doorknob, anti-child doorknob covers for my doors. Um, our two-year-old has figured out how to work the doorknob, so these are custom, custom designed by myself. Instead of going by in those universal ones. This one actually looks just like my doorknobs, minus the cutouts on the sides of it. So that's what the CR-10 is running right now. Um, two zip ties, or you can put screws and bolts. I, I chose to use zip ties just because they're a little bit easier to work with. And um, if for some reason we have to take this off in a pinch, you can see, I mean, the, the holes around here aren't, and these are printed fast. That's why it's kind of crappy quality. Come on camera, focus. Um, if for some reason we have to get this off the door quickly, we can easily, my wife and I can grab a hold of it, stick a finger in and pop the thing off and break it. Um, they take an hour, hour, hour and a half, something like that to print one. So that's what it's printing. Uh, and that may have been my phones that I've used in the past, 3D Gusner. Um, I did get a, uh, a new phone. I got a Pixel 2, so that probably actually would work, but my battery's almost dead from work. So, um, Carl, the girls have not fully decided on a collar for the tower, so we just have it still alternating collars uh, for the Rapunzel tower that Carl Knack 3D Designs gave, gave my daughters. Joe and Chris Raleigh are both too, close to you. Okay, so we're heated up here, so let's get that dunk off the nozzle. And I'd say, damn, that's hot, but you already know that. Okay, so that's off. So let's go back. Since we're heated up, let's level the bed. Helps if I show you guys what I'm up to. All right, we already know. But that was way too high. So I'm just going to run this thing way down. The level... Uh, you guys kind of can't see that because of the reflection on the, of the light. The level wizard will guide you through leveling the bed. Okay. So we'll go next. Level the corner. Okay. Let me get... Since it's got build tech on, I'm going to go ahead and use the little cheat sheet card they gave me. Put that on there. Let's run this thing up. feels good go to the next corner
here to next. Thing moves pretty quickly. Now, I'm not exactly sure why. It said go to next corner. There's like four, three or four inches of the bed sticking behind the hot end, but it's calling this the corner. Go to the next corner. I'm gonna. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go back around. I'm gonna redo the level. Um, my options were to go back or go to the next screen. Screen. Back to the main menu. So let's print something. 3D Benji Power Spec. This, this will probably take a while. Let me go get a spool of filament quick. Actually, you know what? I got the Filament Friday filament. Uh, the other thing we need to do is put the spool holder on this thing. That would be kind of useful. So, the spool holder's got the nut to tighten it up. And the nut slides in here. Holders installed. Filament Friday blue. Always in search of a good blue. Now the other thing is we don't have a clue how much filament is still in here from the person who had it before me. So let's get this raised up. Let's go to quick settings. Move. Uh, the new MP Mini um, has the heated bed, color screen, and Wi-Fi, um, but the first generation doesn't, which this is based off the first generation as well. Although, uh, heated bed, I can apparently, from some quick searching I did, I can buy the heated bed and plug it into this one for like $20. So, I mean, that's, that's a reasonable upgrade, especially when I only spent 100 on the printer. So let's run the hot end up. We'll go ahead and push the filament in here. There's white coming out. And the blue is starting to come out. Now this is a burden printer. I have some cap tube left over. Um, so I'll be probably swapping it out to a cap tube. Okay, so there we go. We started out white and went to blue. Okay, back, back, print file. Do the 3D Benji right off the bat. Little 
bugger off of there. Yeah, I'd be at least with this um, versus buying it on eBay for $105. If I have a problem with this, Micro Center will take it back. So it's going to do a purge. Speaking of which, I hate when printers do purges like this. I'd rather draw the line. Once I use Simplify 3D and slice something myself, it'll draw a line. Kind of slow. Everybody say hi to my wife. Uh, J Flinchball two 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 seven is um, Jen, my wife. All right, let's get that out of here. Okay, so something printer manufacturers should do is when you slice your test print, do a freaking skirt around it. Alright, so I'm stopping that because that wasn't sticking to the bed. I know they know that, but now they all said hi to you. That's what I was at, getting them to do. That's the cool thing, Carl. Our Tooth Fairy doesn't have to worry about stepping on Legos because um, the Legos are in another room. <laughs> All right, so we're up to 210 degrees, or I'm sorry, 194, it's shooting up to Sitting at 194. It's getting well, my air conditioning's not running. Hey, Martin. Okay, so for some reason it's like stuck at 194 degrees. What's the time, typical time for um, thermal, not thermal runaway, but uh, the thermal cutout for the hot end for Marlin? So like five minutes, if it doesn't sense a temperature change, then it shuts down and locks out. Maybe we'll test that. Maybe we'll see if this thing shuts off. Fif Fifteen minutes? Really? Well, so far we're still sitting at 194. Why is that? It says heating. Well, you know what? The whole printer locked up. 
Well, that's great. At least this is an eventful... Um, hey, look at that. The power knob's lit. I didn't realize that. I thought it was a current plate. Okay, reboot. Yeah. The question is, when I turn it back on, what temperature is the hot end at, Eddie? Okay, the hot end was cooling down during that time. I should have tested the reset button. So you can see we're at currently at 51 degrees. Um, so, now nah, it's not a fire hazard. As long as it shuts off the hot end, we're good. Alright, so let's try this again. If it didn't shut off the hot end, then yeah, this thing would be going back. Um, without me bothering to flash the firmware, that would be the end of it. Okay, so we're heating up again, up to 76. There we go, you can kind of see the temperature there. Who put you in timeout, Betty? <laughs> no, this is not an unboxing that results in fire. Hey, Tanner. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's just kind of a side effect. The USB port on the side looks like it's illuminated, but it's if you look inside, it's just the back of the LCD shining out through. You can see it through the side there. There, turn you up right. That's probably a better way. So it's just the LCD shining through. I thought that they actually had an LED in there so that you could see the USB port. All right, almost there. No, I'm not in slow mode, John. Um, I'm actually in next to low late, uh, ultra low latency. I guess it's low latency. Because I want to be able to record the stream at the same time. Oh, you got, yeah, you got the YouTube automated timeout. Stupid YouTube. You talk too much. Two oh seven. I didn't even look to see when this fired up. Did it even say the version? I don't think it did. I may not have showed you guys that part. The version of Marlin. Okay, here we go. such a dumb way to purge <laughs> I hate that way of purging does anybody in the chat actually like slicers or g-code that purges like that
Sorry about that. Actually, um, simplify 3D for all the profiles that I have, or that I've set up, um, without changing them, don't do that hovering purge. So far that's looking okay. It's thicken. Yeah, there's a stringer behind it, but I don't want to mess it up. I like the ones that drag right across the front here and do the purge. That's I'll, If the Simplify 3D profile that I download to get started with it doesn't do that, then I'll, uh, I'll make it do it. So one of the first things that I'm seeing from this printer so far that I don't really care for is how big the bed is and how little volume you can actually use. So that's going to be the first thing I'm looking into is expanding the volume of this thing because uh, what's this thing measure? Crap. I have a messy office. I have no idea where my tape measure is. Um, but I want to see if I can make it use more of the bed. And as far as I know, this has the stock nozzle on it, I would imagine. Um, the sticker showed the purchase date and return date. It was within like four days. Hey, Renaissance Stinker Dork. I'm good. How are you? I haven't gotten to talk to you for a while. For those of you just joining, we're, this is technically the second attempt at a first print on the, it's the power spec uh, duplicator i3 mini. Basically, it's the Wan Hao. It even says Wan Hao on it. Um, so, we're got it out of the box and doing the first test off the SD card, which is a Benchy. Uh, PT3D, that's doing pretty decent with the Magigoo. Uh, 12 prints without having to reapply it. It all depends for me what I print. Um, and the one thing that I'll do is try to uh, move prints around. So, like, I'll coat the whole bed. And then, you know, if an area starts not sticking, I'll print somewhere else. Um, but then if I have something that I have to print in that area, then I'll reapply it. it, it I'll get... With like the CR10S having the big bed like it does, I'll get quite a few prints out of that. I mean, probably moving around small parts, double your 12, I'll at least get like 24 prints out of it. And I typically run glass beds on all my stuff. Um, not So far, not too big of a fan of the different print surfaces, although I'm testing out some stuff that Robbie Mac gave me. And like this doorbell or doorknob... Uh, child proofing thing that I designed and printed. I literally popped that right off the bed as soon as it was done. Um, that stuff we think is build tack, or it's the same material as what build tack's using. Um, just unlabeled, it's just a clear sheet, kind of like the PEI sheets are. But that stuff's working out pretty well so far. I put that on a piece of galvanized sheet metal and stuck it on the CR10. Stuck it right on top of the glass. Yeah, I, I still... I put a piece of glass on all my printers. This will probably get a piece of glass on it. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is... I might actually have enough room there to still stick a piece of glass on. Yeah, I can stick a piece of glass on this without really losing any height. I've heard mixed results with the Ultra Base. I know Chuck Hellebuck loves his, um, but I know Uncle Jesse absolutely hates his. <laughs> nice, James. I just read that. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Renaissance Tinker Dork, yeah, I know what you mean, being busy at work. Um, that's why you haven't seen much coming from me in terms of videos or live streams. I've just been, this week's been a little bit better and last week's been, was pretty decent. Um, we only had like three hours of overtime, but that's not usual for us. Oh, really? I had never heard that about the inconsistent formula for the ultra bases. That would make sense. I mean, if it's not, that would make sense why um, Chuck Hellebuck seems to like love that stuff. So we are 2% in, so this will take a little while. Speed's at 100%. I'd be tempted to bump it up, but I want to see what it prints like the first time around. This will actually be the the second Benchy that I've ever printed. And I didn't even slice it. This does sort of have a parts cooling. The hot end fan is also blowing down on the parts. There's a, the shroud, I don't know if you guys can see it, this little notch right here on the shroud um, is actually a, a slant down towards the print. James, are you using glass as the print bed on the, the print and print? Oh wait, your two player arcade was printed on glass, yeah. They give, the glass gives you a, a super smooth surface, especially like in your case, applying vinyl to it. Um, had to give you a nice finish to be able to do that. But did you put glass on the, the print and print 3D printer? All right, so while that's printing, switch over here and Let me get Simplify 3D opened up. Right, let's remove that. That's my cup holder that I designed for camping. Um, and for those of you who weren't on at the very beginning, um, this printer will likely end up going along camping with us. It may even get left in the camper just so that I don't have to haul it back and forth. I've already got four printers here at the house and don't specifically need another printer, but this will be like my kind of portable printer. If I want to go somewhere and print something or measure something up and print it on site, depending on what it is. So, let's go, I gotta remember how to do this now. How do I add a printer to simplify? I haven't had to do this in a while. I've had hit or miss with Magigoo and prints having to cool before they pop off. Um, they do release better when they pop off, but I've actually had pretty decent luck most times just taking the spatula and running it under and popping them off. Options. Machine. Nope. Where do I set up my printer? I'm probably looking right at it and missing it. Figure assistant. Select a printer. Let's look for the. I wonder if they have it listed as a power spec. Three D X Pro. Power spec Ultra. No power spec Mini. So let's just see. Mono. There's the Mono Price. Maker select, maker select mini, so that may be an option. 
the software that comes with this printer is for its one house version of Cura, but I prefer Simplify. Alright, so there's the 5S Mini, i3 Mini, here we go. Okay, so let's take a look at what these default settings are on here. So we've got 0.4 nozzle. Oh wait, yeah. Set up for manual extrusion width, retract of 2.5, retract speed 30. Layers two, top solid, and bottom solid are three, outline is two, one skirt, infill, that's uh, at 20%. Just wanna check here real quick. Yeah, you guys can still see the printer printing. It's at 7% currently. Temps, 210 degrees. There is no currently, currently no heated bed. Part cooling, that really doesn't matter because there's not a dedicated part fan. I doubt it's, I doubt the heat sink, uh, or the heat break fan is I doubt that's set up for multi-speed, or being controlled by speed. So it's G-code, let's see, 150 by 150 by 115, I thought. One twenty by one thirty by one hundred. So apparently somebody has this tweak to go to 115, I guess we'll We'll try it, see. But it is supposed to be 120 by 120 by 130 by 100. And they have it 150, 150, 115. So we'll see what it does. I know it can't currently use all of the visible build surface. Script. So it's going to start up. It's going to go to G1, or it's going to do G1, X5, Y10, Z.2, Set, reset the extruder, it's going to go to X100, yeah, see, I hate these stupid G codes, or the startup for the purge, so let's change that. We're gonna do, we're gonna copy this one. We'll go from X5 X5Y10 to let's say X5Y50 Nah Yeah, that'll work 50 So that'll give me, uh, let's go 60 That'll give me a 50 millimeter extrusion Z's already set, so we don't need that. Let's go E. Do 12. And then F600. Then at the end of it, We 
we'll do no more E. Alright, no more extruder. We'll go Y70 and we'll do that super fast. Oh wait, 600, not 60. So we'll make that go at 1200. So what that's going to do is purge and then wipe. And then we can get rid of that. Okay, so now, instead of doing that stupid hovering purge where it just spits out a bunch of plastic and then goes printing and drags that ball of plastic into your print, this is instead going to um, purge out to um, 50 millimeters, so it'll run a, a strip right across the front, 50 millimeters, and it'll do a fast wipe at the end of it um, to wipe off any excess. No retraction, no layer change, no tool change because we don't have multiple tools. 104 to shut off the extruder. X0, Y140, F1000. Prepare part for removal. So X0. Means it's going to hone the axe. Yeah, we'll see about that. M84 to disable the motors. Speed 40. We're going to crank that up on the first print. I want to see how fast we can go. Okay. Let's find... What should we print off Thingiverse? What's a quick print? Because this thing's at 11%. <laughs> Alright, chat. What do you guys think we should print out off Thingiverse? Something quick, something simple, but that we can put this to the test. speed test that is <laughs> yeah, Marvin is quicker than the Benchy. Um, I don't know, something different, something quick that's different. We could do a vase, just the, one of the simple vases or something. Let's see what best of week was for last year. Or last year. Last week. That vase is going to take forever. And uh, not be that big. We can do the frog, but water's not on here. So I shouldn't do a frog if water's not, water's not on the stream. Do the Benji at sea. That wouldn't be a quick print. That's a... Well, no, I guess that the wave is the separate... Item. Too bad I have a blue benchy. Blue water and a blue benchy kind of would blend together. You could do a bearing. Mr. Belly. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do that, Martin. I haven't printed a Mr. Belly yet. First of all, let's like the model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign in. Why Thingiverse signed you out is annoying. 
or the Autodesk programs for that matter. First of all, the first thing you should do is like the Mr. Belly, which is thing number 2843667. And I will copy the link and paste that into the chat too. Okay, thing files, Mr. Belly. Let's drag him over here to simplify. Holy crap. <laughs> I don't know, Martin. I don't think that's going to be quick. Hey, Walter's here. Now we can print a frog. Let's see. Let's print a little Mr. Belly. So right now he's 96 millimeters tall. Martin, do you normally print him with any infill or perimeters only? It looks like it should be able to print perimeters only. No infill. How long does it usually take to print at full scale? That's saying two hours and two minutes with the, uh, what was that speed at? That was 40, 25 minutes. How fast do you print it? Oh wait, I got infill and everything else. So let's do away with infill, two perimeters, three bottom, three top at a point two. Let's see what that does. There's an hour and 40 minutes. That's at 60 millimeters a second. Well, uh, I wonder. Okay, well, we don't need three bottom. We'll do three top. We'll do one bottom. And one perimeter. That's still an hour and 25 minutes. Wonder, okay, I said about bumping the speed. Let's go even more. Should we try to crank this thing to 100 millimeters a second? It probably won't make it. Simplify 3D is gonna predict an hour, really? 50%, yeah, let's try that. <laughs> okay, so let's change it back to two perimeters, three bottom, speed, should we try 100 millimeters? What do you guys think? It's what I run my CR-10 at a lot. Yeah, I think you were, Martin, at least at 100%. All right. I've got two yeses. The worst thing it's going to do is fail, so we'll do that. 100 millimeters a second. Let's see how fast that'll print. 18 minutes. My bet is uh, 30 minutes. Hi, Regina. I will tell Jen you said hi. She might be back from the store. Um, she had to go pick something up for the tooth fairy because Dixie lost her first tooth. Um, and the uh, tooth fairy sent her a text message and asked her to pick something up from the store. Uh, 
But if she's back from the store, I'm sure she's probably hiding in the stream somewhere. Yeah, the Benchy's looking good so far. Okay, so we've got uh, Mr. Belly from 3D Printed Iceland printed and, uh, or not printed, sliced up, ready to go, ready to save to the SD card as soon as this is done printing. Hey, Ron. So let's go. Back to the, oh. I'm gonna turn off autofocus on my camera. Where is my Logitech controls? Focus. Congratulations, country, hitting 600 subscribers. Uh, if you guys watching this, which I think probably most of you are. Um, not watching this but subscribe to country 3d um, definitely go um, hit subscribe on country 3d's channel and give him a couple more subscribers he's at 600 now um, let's get him pushed to a thousand uh oh did you guys see that the benchy is gonna sink now it's a drew loop benchy okay well I guess we get to print mr. belly quicker All right, let's stop that. I'm gonna turn that bed a little bit closer then too. That didn't do too bad until it broke loose. Wait a second, what's that say? ct3d.xyz.com. Ain't it supposed to say Benchy on the bottom? Hang on, let me go get my other Benchy that printed solid printed. Or, not. I don't know where it's at. Hmm. I don't know where that's at. Yeah, you're right. So there's, there's a little bit of elephant. It's hard to hold on to. A little bit of elephant footing there on the bottom, but uh, Ron's right. There is a little bit of warping there on the, the front, which that was printing like this. So let's just give those knobs just a little bit of a tweak. Was it ct3d.xyz? Okay. I thought it said Benji on the bottom. I don't know. Never printed Benji's, except for one. So we got the memory card reader in. Let's save this to the memory card. Mr. Belly. Okay. It was starting to do the... Uh, Oh, that's right. Yeah, Daniel works for uh, CT3D or works for CT3D. Come on, focus. So it was just starting to do the infill when it broke loose. But yeah, I think we had a little bit of uh, crappy bed adhesion there on the front because the bed wasn't quite level. All right. So let's do Mr. Belly.
print file. Mr. Dolly. Man, that thing cools down quick. There you go. I knew Jen was in there. Or at least listening or something. Well, that does that. Let me find my autofocus for Logitech. Zoom. Why is that zoom so far in? Oh, I guess it's as far as it goes. There we go. Now we're focused. Simplify 3D, turn on the temp of the extruder and bed before it runs the start G code. Uh, well, I mean, my. St oh, before it does the homing. Let me double check. I think the default is to wait for the temps to come up and then do a G28. But that is a good question because, yeah, that must just be the default way that it writes it in. I think you can change that. There, so there's my extrude, although that's a little bit over extruded. That's some tiny feet. I think my bed could be just a little bit closer. Well, like when you level your bed, you want to have the hot end and the bed already up to temperature. Um, helps to get a more accurate bed, uh, bed leveling. Just for anything that might expand or twist a little bit or anything goofy. Hey, Fernando did um that was your wife that won the role of proto pasta right from fr the Friday night hangouts <laughs> Walter's not on to to shout it out Yeah, especially at that scale. Although the no part fan is obvious at this point. I'm going to slow that down a little bit. I think 100 millimeters a second is kicking that thing's butt. It's funny because it looks a lot bigger on screen than it does on the printer. Simplify 3D is nice. I've, I've become a pretty big fan of it.
I was playing with Kira. Um, oh, right around Earth. I guess it was the night before Earth. I was playing with it a little bit. Yeah, retraction. Default settings for retraction definitely need dialed in for sure, Walter. Um, but I was playing with Cura, the newest version of Cura, um, with the CR-10, just testing, trying to eliminate a little bit of a rough texture on my top layers on flat surfaces. And, um, man, that thing is tiny. You guys have no idea that, well, I guess you do. I mean, seeing the end of the nozzle and how small he is at 50%, it's going pretty quick. I have a feeling Simplify 3D's estimates might actually be close. And I thought I turned the speed down, but I did not. What is my Discord login? Uh, you are right. There's definitely a little bit of stringing there. And one leg might be that uh, uh, for you guys. It would be the left, uh, the right leg. Um, looks like it might be wobbling a little bit. So still need to adjust the bed a little bit. See how it does with the bridging when it gets up there. Uh, yes. Dear, I have one set of doorknobs printing and the other one's printing up there in the top left corner. Well, this is true. Yeah, a brim probably would help with that wobble. Uh, I think, Ron, I think it'll be all right. It's almost to the point where it's going to bridge them. Dude, that thing is tiny. It's actually doing really well for the, I mean, the legs are really small. Who are you doing glass for work for now, uh, Renaissance Tinker Dork? Are you doing it for any of the, the YouTube channels or are you uh, doing one for something else? While that's printing, I'm going to jump over on Simplify 3D quick and change two things. One, I want the purge across the front. I don't know what I was thinking when I changed the Y coordinates. I actually want that to do that on the X, just because that's the way I like seeing it done. So we're going to go from X5 to X55. Stay at Y10. Actually, you know what? Y1. And another door knobs finished.
I should just print a bed full of doorknobs, but G code I have sliced already is one of them. Yeah, I'll put the bath bathroom one on tonight, babe. Ooh, bellies. You guys can't really see it because of the lighting. But the uh... oh no, it's printing all right. That's the text on it for the 3DP Iceland. Be a little bit of curling air on the the edges, but it seems to be handling that. So what's everybody up to tonight while this thing's printing? Well, oh, Barrett's starting the arms. All in all, that actually doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of uh, sags on the overhangs at the bottom of the belly there, but... Yeah, it does, Ron. It seems like this thing's printing pretty good. I mean, this is out of the box. Already set up for you. There's no assembly. Just plug it in and kind of close to plug in and print. Currently at 84% with at and 14 minutes of print time. Yeah, Walter, I've missed both of your evening streams so far. Um, yesterday I was working late, and tonight uh, got home around like six, six thirty, something like that, and then we went for a walk. Um, the girls and uh, Jen and I went for a walk.
I just ordered some um, Matter Hackers nylon, uh, not the Nylon X, but the collared nylon. And uh, uh, it was hot here too, country. Probably not quite as hot as down there, but oh, the heat and humidity the last two days up here has been kind of horrible. Um, but I ordered some of the Matter Hackers Ni Pro Series nylon in red and blue and I'm printing uh, vintage boat logos um, for my boss actually and instead of printing the manufacturer name for replacements um, we're doing the name of the boat and doing it in the collars of the boat which is red and blue so I'm interested to see when that gets here um, I haven't used the Matter Hackers nylon before but because of being around the water and outside a lot using nylon instead of PLA or ABS or even the HTPLA probably would do all right from protopasta but um, this should hopefully hold its collar a little bit better I'm thinking Ninety-two percent, eighteen minutes. So it simplifies off a little bit. Not as much as it is on my CR10, man. The times on that are way off. <laughs> good point Ron that's a very good point hey Brian Vines how are you well, thanks everybody for the thumbs up I see we're up to 11 thumbs up appreciate it all the thumbs up are welcome and appreciated if you guys are new to the channel, um, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, and hopefully I'll be finding some time to do some more live streams. Um, and hopefully get some videos out. I do have uh, some drone footage of 4th of July fireworks, and I need to finish editing the video of the assembly of the Friday Night logo, which is back there on the wall the community build it's blurry but it's back there um, still not mounted it's sitting on top of the couch right now in my messy office this is what my office looks like at the moment it horribly needs cleaned Twenty minutes and ninety eight per cent.
<laughs> Mr. Belly will become self-aware and will take over your 3D printers to multiply itself. What's the biggest uh, Mr. Belly that you've printed so far, Martin, or seen anybody print? See you, Brian. Oh, he's starting to... Is he wobbling, or is that just the shadow? I'll tell you what, as small as that is, it's actually coming out really well. can't tell if he's wobbling or not. Definitely a little bit of flex to it. There he goes. He's done. And he hit the camera. So there is Mr. Belly from 3DP Iceland. got some zits up here although that I think is supposed to be the writing Oof, let me put the camera down I'm wobbling too much so there he is um, so the the zits here are indeed um, we're supposed to say 3dp Iceland I believe all right, it's supposed to say Mr. Belly there. Um, because I scaled it down, the 3DP Iceland logo is kind of hard to, to read. Um, that's probably more so with me scaling it. Martin said that it is... The name sticking out, the logo goes inward. So that's what, it, that's what it's supposed to be. Um... Not too bad. I mean, a little bit of stringing. Let's see how he comes off the build tech. Just like that. That was pretty easy. So there we go. My very own, very first, oh, I don't have all your focus turned on. Very first Mr. Belly. Bit of stringing. Top's not too bad. There we go. Not bad. And he's actually pretty solid. I mean, for only two perimeters. Well, I mean, two perimeters pretty much made him solid. But, I mean, no layer separation. Oh, there it went. Didn't take a lot of effort, but there's not much to him either. So, Mr. Belly is now legless. Sorry, Martin. <laughs> he's got a rat tail. There you go. So that's the first successful print on the PowerSpec One How uh, Duplicator i3 Mini. That printed pretty well. I'm happy with that to start with. I mean, I got some tuning to do on the uh, on the stringing there. Get rid of that. Um, but I mean that was actually at hundred millimeters a second whether it was actually making hundred millimeters a second. I'm not sure um, Probably not print time was 22 minutes and two seconds not bad So should we print something else on here or is there anything else you guys want to see printed something quick? Build tack cleaned up pretty well. No scrapes on the build tack except for right there. Let's bring that one down a little bit. Not bad. There you can. You can see I was digging in a little bit there, so this corner was a little bit high. But otherwise, no marks on the build tack. They're the uh, probably knockoff build tack. 
Print something circular. Good point. Let's do a vase. Do something in vase mode here quick. Alright, so let's switch back to... Simplify... Face at 120 millimeters a second. We could do that. We could do Dixie's vase. That would print on here. Although that, that's star shaped, that's not circular. You guys want to see something circular. Circular base. Why, how is that considered circular? There's a droplet base. Let's do this one. I haven't done a spiral base. See you, Walter. I thought you said you were going to stay and watch. <laughs> Spiral base two sounds like a reasonable choice. Twenty five minutes to download. Holy crap! Fifty three meg. Four hundred percent Benchy. <laughs> Only if you're sticking around to watch it, Walter. Wow, why is my download speed going so slow? Shouldn't be because I'm streaming. What is up with that? You'll watch a 400% Benchy. <laughs> Yeah, let's do the low poly one. Forty seven kilobytes, that's better. Bam. Ew, that's ugly. You want, oh yeah, I'll I'll do that bigger for you, babe, on the CR-10 and the mermaid filament. Uh, okay, let's, well, I guess, oh, shit. Scale to max. That low poly version's ugly. Yeah, the build volume of this thing's kind of tiny. What other ones are there? Okay, so I'm gonna add this real quick to collection. Okay, let's go back and see what else we got. There's the twisted gear lamp. This would be appropriate on one of these, the wearable planter vase. Nice and tiny and tiny printer. To do that. Yeah, that was the low low poly version of it. Let's see what, how big this one is.
Yeah, that was a quick download. And it's almost the right size. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of Mr. Belly. And we will scale to max. Change this to base mode. Point two. Should we go point two or point three layer height? Let's see what point two is time wise. Yes. One hour forty seven minutes. <laughs> point three. Okay. It is only a point four nozzle, so do point three at I'm going to say a the 75% first layer. Okay. Prepare. I didn't shave off much. One hour and 12 minutes at 100 millimeters a second. Whatever. Let's do it. Oh. Need the memory card. Rose base. Print, low poly rose vase. Okay, we're heating up. Kind of want to do this in a different filament. Let me go see what I got. Let's do it in uh, Repcord White. This thing's going to start. One thing because of the gaps on this extruder that this thing definitely will not do is um, flexibles. Get rid of that booger. Hey, look at that. Pooch just joined in. There you go, Pooch. Well, 
Well, that's printing pretty quick so far. That was the skirt, so, I mean, that printed faster, but... Repcord white mixed in with a little bit of chip blue. Tell you what, for a hundred bucks though, I mean, I paid 115 for the TiVo Tarantula that I bought on Craigslist, and that thing needed a lot of work to get it to even print. It took me almost a year till I had the time to actually get it to print. I'd work on it a little bit here and there. This is, <laughs> this is nice to have a printer for a hundred dollars that is printing half decent. This is actually one of the bigger spools um, of Repcord filament, um, closer to a full size, but I think it's, what, 500 grams pooch? Extruder's skipping a little bit at a uh, hundred millimeters a second, trying to keep up. <laughs> yeah, uh, half kilogram, 500 grams. And then the other spools are quarter, uh, 250 gram spools. Man, did I slow that down or what? Nope. Simplify says 100 millimeters a second. That's definitely not printing at 100 millimeters a second. Oh, it is humid as crap, pooch. Um, I don't even know what the humidity was today. All I know is as soon as I walked outside, I started sweating immediately. That's my humidity gauge. Yeah, I can speed it up directly. So that's 100%. take it a second to populate through. I just ran it up to 120. It is kind of a loud printer. I don't know if you guys can hear it printing or the CR-10 back there whistling along. How'd that uh, printer belt come along pooch I didn't get to I watched part of the one stream but I didn't get to I caught it on the replay um, but that was the first one I believe
that is a printer that I'm really interested in. I mean, back when um, the fidget spinner craze was all the rage, um, that would have been nice to have to like crank out a bunch of the same collar, just one after the other. Okay, let's speed that up some more. I think she's going as fast as she can. It seems to ignore the speed settings. Up there, it's speeding up. Hey, Wiley's 3D or Wiles 3D. Not sure how to pronounce that. Which is interesting that that's as fast there. It's, it seems like it's going a little bit quicker now. Because um, when it does some movements, it does it pretty quick. Let's go 200%. It's actually coming out pretty good at that speed. There we go. Now she's cranking away. Hey, Kriegs 3D printing. Exposure down. There we go, that looks a little bit better. See you, Walter. She's cruising. Can we go faster? Well, the firmware will let me go faster. 250%. There it goes. It's just stepped up the speed. That's we'll push it a little bit at a time here. We got got a decent bit of a print here going, so I'll push it up a little bit and then I'll push it up again. Right now we're at 250% uh, speed, which we started out. It was supposed to be 100 millimeters a second, but that sure didn't seem like 100 millimeters. Damn, look at that thing go. Two hundred and fifty percent wrong. 
We were at 200, and I bumped it up. Look at that thing cruise. Holy crap. And it's looking good. Let's go 300. At some point, it's got to go crappy, right? Kind of hard to tell on this vase. A circle probably would have been better. Should have just modeled something quick. It's still ramping up in speed. Uh, I don't know. I'm not looking at the town. Yeah, still maintaining temperature. Technically, this should be 300 millimeters a second, but I have a hard time believing it started out at 100 millimeters a second. Yeah, Repcord Filament's handling it pretty well. So that's 300%. It's got to go to crap now. We're going to go to 350. Yeah, Martin, if you want for your CR-10, I can send you the settings, my uh, profile for Simplify 3D if you want. Not bad for a bunch of straight lines. Yeah, the uh, CR10 profile that I have is um, is actually Uncle Jesse's, and then tuned a little bit uh, more to my liking. But I can send you both of them, Martin. And it's actually Uncle Jesse's current one that he's using, uh, not the one that I think's published out there. It's a little bit newer. So that's 350, and it's still looking all right. Actually, you know, it's looking more than all right. It's almost indistinguishable from down below. Oh, 
Looks like maybe a little bit of under extrusion. Let's see what the temperature is doing. The temperature staying up. The extruder's not necessarily keeping up. Although, it kind of looks rough when it comes around there. But it actually doesn't look too bad and up close. Uh, I do have, um, I had Magi Goo on because I was printing some Pet G stuff and needed a separation on the floor lamb. But I'll tell you what, that floor laminate's working. There's still a little bit of residue still left on there from the Magi Goo. But I'll tell you what, it's actually, you know, it's better than printing on glass. Um, you don't get the smooth surface, but it's working well. Prints pop off as soon as they're done. So that's 400%. And it really doesn't look bad. So let's go more. Four fifty. On camera there, uh, maybe what looks like about a millimeter below the, the top layer that it's running laying down. It looks like there's some under extrusion, but it's actually not. I'm not sure what that is. Oh yeah, it is some under extrusion. But it's holding shape. It's not ringing. So it looks like from about the point where I pushed it up to 400, it did start to under extrude a bit. Yeah, Pooch, that Repcord White's holding up pretty well. I do see the stair stepping on the corners, but I think that's in this model. Hang on. And uh, now it's not necessarily in. Yeah, it is. Maybe a little bit of ringing on those corners. Yeah, you can see down towards the bottom where there isn't that. But then as I've been ramping the speed up, it, that has been getting a little bit worse. And it's definitely under extruding now. Um, so let's back the speed back down. I'm going to drop it down to 300 or 350. Let's see what it does. Yeah, the 0.3 layer height and the speed probably, probably has a lot to do with that stair stepping. got to get something to set you guys up on. Hang on a second here. Whoa. There, you can kind of see the, the under extrusion from about here up to, like, right about here. 
but now that I stepped it back down to 350, it's printing good. For a 0.3 layer height and 100 millimeters a second ramped up to 350. Like I said, I don't think it started out at 100 millimeters a second, but. Yeah, um, I've got a Repcord Blue uh, cell phone holder that I actually have to reprint just because of getting a different phone um, in the vehicle and collars holding tight on it. Even though it's out in the sun, it's out in the heat. Um, doesn't come in or anything. So Ron, you're absolutely right. It does hold the collar really well. Let's see, we are at 66% in 24 minutes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think I'm pretty happy with this little printer. Their stair stepping definitely seems to be reduced too. Yeah, for a hundred dollars, can't go wrong. And I'm telling you, man, if you guys have a uh, micro center nearby you, and you're interested in a little printer like this, um, I mean, this so far, I would say this is probably pretty decent for an entry level printer for sure. Um, or like in my case, a printer that's going to go camping with me. Uh, Micro Center, check their website for your local store. See if they have an open box on the uh, Power Spec Duplicator i3 Mini. Um, and if they do, and it's listed at like four hundred and forty-three dollars, they will drop the price uh, forty-nine dollars because of the sale. I think this vase is going to step out again at the top. I forget the shape of it. Yeah. Oh, I can't take it to the beach. Oh, no. This thing's small enough. I could stick it in our suitcase and you wouldn't know it's there, babe. some more height. I wonder if that other base downloaded yet. It did. I'm going to print another vase of this. Uh, according to the box, it is 120 by 130 by 100. Um, but the profile on Simplify 3D is configured for 150 by 150 by 115. So we'll find out because I scaled this to max. So it's pretty much going to max it out. Time on the screen is estimated elapsed time 28 minutes. 
Simplify 3D said it was going to take like an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a big printer. Although the build plate is definitely a lot bigger than what it says it's capable of printing. Um, and I did see some modifications to be able to use the full length of it. <laughs> yeah, um, if you blink, there's a vase showing up. And it's looking good at that speed. So I got that other spiral vase downloaded and sliced and ready to go. Um, I'm going to do that one next. I think that's going to show the effect of scaling it up. Uh-oh. I think I hit max height because <laughs> it's not going up any higher. So 115 is too high for that printer. So while that's finishing, I'm going to adjust the build space. Oh, it's filling in the top. I forgot to turn off top layers. Okay. See ya. 29 minutes. So there it is, Ooh, over here, not too bad, you can see there is, in here there's some under extrusion when I shadow it, but up here all this was done at 300% speed, 350% speed, I'm sorry, down here was done three, well, what was supposed to be 100 millimeters a second, and you can see in the palm of my hand. It's not real big but I mean a lot of stuff that I print is no bigger no taller than this in a lot of cases um, the simplify 3d profile was set for 115 millimeters the box says a hundred so maybe with some modification I can make it go 115 I don't know I'm not sure that it's really worth doing that but let's throw this in there and I'm going to re-slice this. Alright, not re-slice it, but this is that spiral base and not the low poly spiral base. It's not 1001. 110. Build volume. What did I say the box said? 120 by 130 by 100. I'll leave it at 150 for now. I'll test that. See if I can actually get 150 out of it. Um, speed, 100 layers. Let's turn off top layers. Okay. Prepare to print. One hour, 29 minutes. Oh, wait, I gotta rescale that because. What is the overall height of that? There we go. Prepare to print. One hour, 24 minutes. Spiral base. And just for the sake of argument, I'm going to switch out again. Let's do another rep cord filament. Alright, I'm going to switch back here to the camera. Get rid of this crap. Okay. 
over that little goober. And go ahead and print file, spiral base two. While that heats up, I'm gonna go grab another spool of rep cord. So let's go, I've got this partial spool of rep cord red. It's actually got some age to it. This is some aged rep cord. I'm saving I'm saving the purple haze no purple haze I'm waiting till I'm the only person with a spool of it <laughs> a spool of the OG purple haze that is It automatically went to 100%. Big goober. Purple Haze 2.0 pooch, but I got the OG. Holy crap. That's 100 millimeters a second. I don't know why that other one didn't. Something, Simplify 3D made an executive decision quite apparently. Holy crap. <laughs> There's no way that's coming out good. Okay. Oh wait, that's because it's still at 350%. How did the speed go back up? Yeah, it started quick because it was actually, the print speed started at 100, but then jumped to 350 again. Okay. Restarted. No, not bed level. Damn it. Okay, we're heating back up again. I'm gonna increase my exposure because you guys can't see that. Ah, there we go.
Yeah, for some reason, Ashley. Uh, so on the last vase, I was messing with the speed multiplier as it was printing, and um, I told it to. I had it printing at three hundred and fifty percent speed, um, so it multiplied it by three hundred and fifty percent. It started out at a hundred, so I didn't touch anything, but then it quickly, very quickly, ramped up to three hundred and fifty percent when it started printing. This other vase could be like a Chinese finger trap, though. Stick your finger in there, it won't come back out. Two hundred and nine degrees, almost ready. Looks like there's a goober hanging on the nozzle. That looks like a hundred millimeters a second. Could have done a fatter vase too. I'm still impressed there for a hundred dollars. I think this one's a keeper. What we should do is uh, put some of that crappy inland in here and run it through. Uh, it was open box for one hundred dollars. Um, they are selling currently for one hundred and forty nine ninety nine new. Uh, the open box was one hundred and forty three dollars, and they knocked forty nine dollars off that price to uh, take it down to be open box minus the discount, essentially.
But I mean, even still, even if you bought this at full price, it's a $200 printer. $199 is full price. Um, you can get them from mono price for that price or um, Micro Center. Right now, Micro Center has them on sale for $149 brand new. So even at that price, I mean, it's a decent printer for that price. At least on initial test, that is. If you check your local Micro Center page, look for an open box of it, and then go into the store and ask them to adjust the price for the open box, they will. Or at least mine did. Uh, the one I got it from, I bought the last one. Somebody had bought one earlier in the day. Uh, it's the Towson, or when you look at the site, it's uh, Parkville uh, Micro Center in Maryland. Yeah, I, and yeah, I bought the printer for camping. Um, I think it's going to work out pretty well for that. I was going to do the upgrade on it and slap a heated bed on it, but... Uh, yeah, the monitor price is exactly the same. The V1 monitor price Maker Select Mini is exactly the same printer. Um, they're both made by Wanhow, so nah, it's not that's not 100 millimeters a second. It slowed down. It was doing the infill pretty quick though. Base mode. I'm wondering if it's because of the time to complete a layer. Uh, that setting's probably set up and simplify to slow it down. So let's bump it up. So that's 100%. Let's go right up to 300. Mad Mike, you just want to see this thing crash and burn, don't you? <laughs> now, keep in mind, if you buy the one off eBay, you don't necessarily have... This, I have 30 days with it, and I can take it back. No questions asked, they'll take it back. That is the one benefit to uh, buying it from Micro Center. You got 30 days with it. So even if you get an open box and it's a bum one, um, this was this was conditioned new open box. Whatever the hell that means. It came with a free file that doesn't uh, normally come with the printer, I don't think. Although it's the right colors, but I don't think it comes with the printer. Okay, that's 300. Let's push it to 350. And this is stock firmware, everything out of the box as it is. Um, printing pretty decent. I got some other stuff I want to test on it. Um, I think the thermal runaway protection and all that, make sure that's enabled. And if it's not, there is, um, it's running Marlin, so I can flash, should be able to flash a Marlin image onto it. See you, John. Thanks for joining in. Have a good night.
Hey, Nightbot decided to finally actually start working. Uh, Red Light, I paid $104 before taxes. Um, to be exact, $104.96. So we'll call it $105. Yeah, it's actually, it's doing good. I mean, Wan Hao makes decent products. Um, I know there's some people don't care for Wan Hao, but every Wan Hao I've been around, I've been happy with, or Wan Hao rebranded printer I've been happy with. My brother has the, uh, does he have the, I forget if he has, he has the Plus. Um, I had a Duplicator i3 Plus, the V2.1. Um, he's got a Monter Price Maker Select Plus, um, which is the same printer, essentially. And um, my cousin has a Duplicator i3 V2. Um, they've all been pretty decent printers. I mean, I've never really had any complaints with them except for my Duplicator i3 v2.1 plus whatever um the main board went out about 11 and a half months in um and quit driving the z stepper so i took it back to micro center and because they do the warranty it was a power spec uh rebrand they do the in-house warranty on it i took it there they couldn't fix it so they offered me another one or my money back. They only had an open box one, so I got my money back, and that's when I bought my DJI. But, I mean, the prices are decent on them. Um, less than you'll pay to buy it from Wanhow. But it's the same exact printer. The Power Spec, Alt, uh, not Ultra. Um, I have that too. That's my Flash Forge rebrand. Um, the Duplicator i3 Plus from them has power specs firmware on it but you can flash Wanhouse firmware on it so it, it requires taking it apart and taking the lcd out and plugging into an internal uh, micro usb i want to say port but you can reflash it once you do that then you can flash it through the external usb they're definitely printers i would i would recommend people look into them looks a little bit rough right in here it looks a little bit rough but it actually in person does not look like the reflections that the camera's picking up um, the, that texture that looks like it's there it's not actually there Um, I have this makes number five um, I have this one now I have my Delta that I originally built uh, which is a Fogger Tech Castle um, the kit I put that together that was my very first printer um, that actually is a workhorse the only thing is I never dialed it into um, sorry um, the Castle I never dialed in to be dimensionally accurate. The It runs on a belt-driven system and um, just never fine-tuned it. Um, then I got the PowerSpec Ultra, which is a Flash Forge. It's a Flash Forge Dreamer hardware in the Flash Forge Creator box. So it looks like a creator from the outside, but it's actually a Dreamer. Um, the difference only difference between what it looks like out externally 
is it has a touch screen versus the uh, navigation buttons. Um, that one's definitely a workhorse. That's my like go-to for really fine prints and stuff. Um, and I have it doing dual extrusion perfect. Um, my CR-10S, which is going up in the top left corner there, um, that's a workhorse. That thing just continuously goes and goes. That's a CR-10S. Um, I got it from Printed Solid. And um, even the, the Duplicator i3 Plus that I had, that was a pretty decent workhorse. The only one that I have that I don't consider a workhorse it, so far is the TiVo Tarantula. That thing's just a piece of crap. You can see a little bit of artifacting starting right there. I'm not sure why all of a sudden that started. I'm going to try to back the speed down a bit and see if that goes away. I'm going to 325. 16 minutes in so far. Yeah, it is, Ron. <laughs> it's a lot faster than I thought it would go. Some of that texture is starting to show up right in here, too. We'll go down to 275. Vase mode is fun if you, like, you want to see stuff like this artifacting here. Uh, vase mode's pretty good at doing that because when you're running multiple perimeters, you can start to kind of hide that um, artifacting a little bit. I think I can already see that it might have stopped. Yeah, it did. It stopped that artifact now that I slowed it down to 275. Uh, I don't think... It's not the same as echoing. Um, what I think it is is the momentum from the head kind of jogging it around a little bit especially now that it's making bigger moves so the artifacts are coming out a little bit it's more kind of more like ringing really definitely smoothed out now that I dropped it to 275 still a little bit up in here That's 40% complete. I'm going to try dialing that speed down a bit more. 225 and see if we can get rid of that ringing. See you, Ron. Thanks for joining. I think I'll be printing this vase on the CR-10 and uh, protopasta mermaid, whatever it is, mermaid's tail or whatever, the teal metallic that they came out with. Uh, Jen saw this one as I was browsing Thingiverse and asked me to print it for her. No, you're fine, Ashley. Questions are good. Questions are how we all learn. After this face is over, I think I'll probably shut down the stream at that point. Um, 
I know Joel, 3D Printing Nerd, is going to be streaming at 1 a.m. Eastern, uh, 9 p.m. Pacific, I think he said it is. Um, yeah, that would make sense since it's 1 a.m. Eastern. interesting i just got a notification that cr from chrome that it was no longer the default browser i didn't change anything but edge apparently changed itself back to the default somehow You can see the, the ringing here is getting better up there towards where I switched to 200 as well. See you, Mike. Can you vase mode a pair of cowboy boots? Like, wearable cowboy boots? Or just a, uh, just thinking about that, the, the flat part of the top of the, the boot would be, not the top of the boot, but the top of the foot probably wouldn't work. Um, what you could do is if you're using Simplify 3D Run, you could do multiple processes and do up to the top within, up to the top of the foot with infill and then um, the rest of it are with support material and then the rest of it after that with base like everything up the leg Vase mode would work fine But I'm not sure if you wanted real boots or just a 3d model of boots Let's move the camera up in the world again Ron, what printer are you using? You have a row stock, right? Yeah, I'll probably be in the same boat as you, Ashley. Um, I might try to catch the beginning of it, but you know, we those West Coasters. Nine p.m. for them is too late for us East Coasters in the most for the most cases real ones <laughs> I, I'm sure there's a way and I've actually been kind of curious with the CR 10 to play with the idea but it'll take a lot of flexible filament to do it um, flip-flops or something like that would probably be pretty easy to print or sandals you do have a CR 10 if there's something you want to test out simplify 3d Ron, send me the model I'll slice it and send you the G code for the CR 10 I could even slice it for the castle, but need to know your dimensions and everything. I actually don't have to leave for work quite as early tomorrow. I'm working close by. This morning I was in D.C. and had to leave at 5.30 to head down there. Um, but tomorrow I'm actually working local, so I may try to catch some of Joel's stream.
We are 58% in. I'm at 225% speed. Uh, 25 minutes. Then Simplify 3D estimated an hour and 24 minutes at normal speed. That's, Mike, I don't... I watch YouTube more than anything. YouTube is my TV. Um, we got rid of cable, but then more recently we got uh, DirecTV, their streaming package. Um, there's some shows Jen wanted to watch, so we ended up getting that, but I don't watch it. I, unfortunately, that even me not watching that means it kind of costs more than it's worth, but she's happy, so happy wife, right? We could have raced them. I could have scaled this up and put it on the CR-10. Started them both at the same time. CR-10. Uh, I want to get a bigger nozzle for my CR-10. Like an actual bigger nozzle. Not the, the crap that I tried to do a month ago where I drilled out a nozzle. That worked well for a little bit, but then failed horribly when the sidewalls of the nozzle let loose. Cord filament's doing pretty well, though. Actually, what I want to do, Ron, is um, I want to... It would have to be a multi-part vase, or else I have to extend the CR-10 up, um, which I don't really want to do, because I really don't want to screw it up. Um, but we have the, the vase from the part daddy. I want to print another vase... Um, possibly even using the same exact model and um, print a multi-piece part on the CR-10 at like 1.2 or 1. Point, even 1. 1.5 millimeters um, on the nozzle and that way we have a matching sort of so to speak matching set but it would take a hell of a lot of filament to do it even in base mode It does kind of look like a pint glass at the moment, doesn't it? Um, I do have some of the filler blend, Ashley, but I have to wait till my wife decides what she wants me to print with it. Um, we bought some 
uh, two of the samples from them when we were at Murph. Hey Google, turn on the CR-10S. Turn on the CR-10S. Come on. Uh, I forget. It's over in my bin of um, bin of uh, samples. Turn on the CR-10S. Search. Turn on the CR10S. You got it. Turning on the county route 10 south. <laughs> I, I want to say we got the blue, green, and white. And then maybe pink, purple, and something white, I want to say. This would actually be a good one. Jen wants me to print one of these for uh, for her desk at work um, when she goes back to school. And um, the fill blend would be great. The fill blend's awesome stuff for vases. Um, just the samples that I saw from them at Murph. I was hoping they were at Earth again. Um, I was gonna buy some filament from them then. But the also, idea has also been in my head of getting a volcano hot end and doing what they're doing to make the fill blend too. Then I, I could essentially at that point blend any color I want. What were you doing, Mike? Flashing the latest Marlin to, to the CR-10. Yeah, that's the that's where that stuff really shines, is stuff like a vase, Ashley, where the nozzle's changing direction constantly. You get a, a cool gradient of collars throughout the whole print. Cleaned up nice at 225% speed. Um, really cleaned up nice, and it's printing pretty quick. We're at 34 minutes and 80% complete, so I'd say probably in the next 15 minutes this should be done. A little bit of artifact on it. My camera's going nuts trying to maintain exposure. There's a tiny little bit of under extrusion starting. Right in there, you can see the, the holes from a little bit of under extrusion. I have a feeling that's because of the way the spool holder setup is on this thing.
So besides on the initial, uh, I started printing a benchy. The bed wasn't quite level, so I shut it off. Um, went to restart the print, and for some reason the printer locked up. Um, the good part was the hot end did not continue to heat. It shut off, and when I rebooted the printer, I was down to 50 degrees Celsius. So, I mean, with that said, yes, it was a bug. I don't know if I can reproduce it or not. I'll we'll have to do a little bit more experimenting with it. Um, but if it's a bug, it's a bug I can kind of live with. I mean, if the hot end would have continued to heat when it was locked up, that would have been a different story. But it did shut down the hot end. So, I mean, fail safe on that part at least seemed to be okay. Whatever that under extrusion was, it, it stopped now. Some of the things I could see doing to this, uh, potentially adding a dedicated parts cooling fan because currently the only parts cooling is coming from this little bit of a shroud or uh, slant on the, the hot end cooling fan shroud. That is blowing air down onto the print. Um, looks like maybe, actually it's almost 50% of the air from the fan is being redirected down to the part the rest of it's being directed to the hot end um, so I could see putting a dedicated parts cooling fan on here that can be speed controlled um, possibly putting the heated bed on it I'll have to consider what I want to do with this printer if I want everything to be uh, PLA or HTPLA or some variant of it that it's not going to require a heated bed um, I'll probably put a piece of glass on it, and, or maybe even a flex plate, so um, not the actual build tech flex plate system or anything like that, but just uh, spring steel, not spring steel, uh, galvanized sheet metal on the bed with a print surface on that, um, like I'm doing on the CR-10 at the moment. But besides that, I mean, firmware upgrades, definitely a must. I want to get this thing to the latest Marlin firmware, regardless of where it's at. Um, but look and see what it's actually at. Um, they do have... So one, how the newer version, the V2 of this, does have a heated bed. Um, or at least as an option, you can get a heated bed um, pre-installed on it supposedly from the little bit of research I was doing online that uh, heated bed will fit the V1 and the board has the outputs for it uh, the input for the thermistor and the output for the heater um, so it's possible that I may just have to buy the the bed and from what I was seeing the prices look like maybe 20 bucks I mean it's definitely for a hundred dollar printer it's a worthwhile upgrade at that point so we'll see. I gotta look and see what my options are there. I 
Night, Ashley. Uh, Z height is... Actually, it doesn't tell you the Z height. Um, we're at 97%, 41 minutes in. And it does not tell you Z height on the screen right now. Um, now, the other thing I will be doing to this is once um, the stream's over, well, probably tomorrow, actually, I'm going to put Octoprint on it. Um, I have a Raspberry Pi that runs my Delta and the TiVo, and I'll have that one running this as well. That is Repcord Red, Pooch. Night, Ashley. Yeah, the camera's having issues with it, Pooch. Oh, there we go. Vase is complete. Let me try to adjust the lighting there. So, rep cord red. Um, it, it is coming out really orange, but it is red. And then there is the vase, and it pops off easily. So, down here we were printing, whoop, printing at 300%. Um, and... Uh, three, yeah, three fifth. Yeah, this was three hundred. I bumped it up to three hundred and fifty, and you can see we got a little bit of artifacting. Um, it's a little bit more visible with a top-down light on it right in here. Then I reduced it down, back down to three hundred. Most of it went away, but we kept this little bit of ringing on the edges here until I backed it down to two hundred, uh, two hundred and twenty-five percent speed. And then from there, I mean, it looks pretty decent. Um, there was a little bit of under extrusion right in here. I'm not sure exactly why it did that. But total print time 42 minutes for basically max Z height, uh, which is 100 millimeters. It took 42 minutes and zero seconds. But overall, it's not bad. Layer lines look good. A little bit of ringing there yet. So, I mean, typically I'm not going to be running this printer that fast. But it's good to know I can. A little bit of loss of quality, but otherwise pretty good. Ooh, up close and personal. Yeah, I don't know why. Colors off on the camera for some reason. So, there you guys have it. That was the Power Spec um, Duplicator i3 Mini or Wanhal Duplicator i3 Mini Mono Price maker select mini v1 um unboxed opened oh yeah unboxed set up and running within really i mean we had it out of the box and running within about 15 minutes um from the rest of the stream we got to do a little bit of printing on it and tested some vases we did a partial benchy that unfortunately came loose from the bed um, didn't have the bed quite level so you can see there's a little bit of lifting on the front there and a lot of elephants footing elephant footing on the uh, the back side of the benchy but it was looking pretty good um, quality is pretty decent of that that was the uh, filament Friday blue PLA we also did 3dp Iceland's um, mr. belly and then I proceeded to break the legs off, checking to see how strong it was. Um, <laughs> sorry, Martin. Sorry I broke Mr. Belly's legs. I will promise I 
I will print another one. Actually, you know what? I may do that here when I go to bed. I'm, I've got enough confidence in this printer to go ahead and print that full size um, when I head to bed. Um, then we printed the white vase, which is printed really well. We were playing with the speeds. We had it up to 450% speed. Um, sliced at 100 millimeters a second. It did not start out down here at the bottom at 100 millimeters a second. But overall, even at 400, it looked good. We had a little bit of stepping over here on the sides. Um, a little bit of ringing from it. But then I reduced down to 350% and it finished out well. The top is the way it is and that hole's melted into it because the Simplify 3D default profile is set for 115 millimeters. Um, the printer build volume is actually only 100 millimeters. So it maxed out and then couldn't go up any higher and it just kept printing around in a circle here and mashing that over. Um, this is printed in the Repcord white PLA, the uh, uh, 500 kilogram, oh yeah, 500 kilogram, um, 500 gram spool. And then finished up here with a spiral vase. Um, started out at 100 millimeters a second. Stepped up to 350%. We got a little bit of artifacting on that. Then stepped it back down to 225 and it printed pretty well after that. The only issue that I came across on the printer um, was that point where it locked up at the very beginning when I stopped the first benchy that came loose from the bed and started up the second one. But otherwise, for $104.96 from Micro Center for an open box, um, or the sticker said open box like new, um, printed great. I, I can't really complain about the way it printed. Um, this printer will definitely end up going along up to the campground with us when we go camping and um, I'll be printing some stuff that way um, so if you guys like this video please be sure to hit the thumbs up um, if you want to see more hit the subscribe button and if you want to get notified of live streams and new uploads be sure to ring the bell next to the subscribe button and if you're new to the channel, welcome. And for all of you, I'm Matt, and this is how I do it.